very quietly, secretly even, a group of 400 people, including 150 engineers, have been developing a $27,000 electric pickup truck at a nondescript building in Troy, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. The name of the company doing all this is Slate. And at the very least, it's going to become a case study for the auto industry in how to develop a low-cost vehicle. First, the basics of the truck itself, then how it all came to be. There are actually two models. There's a two-door, two-passenger pickup, and then, with a cap added to the pickup bed, it becomes a two-door, five-passenger SUV. There are two different bed caps, one with an upright backlight to accommodate more cargo, and one with a fastback to give it a sportier look. The structure of the truck is a blend of body on frame, unibody, and skateboard. Its high strength steel frame is very stiff with a 35 hertz bending moment. And Slate is using a lot of off the shelf parts to hold down cost and develop its truck more quickly. To eliminate the cost of investing in a body shop in the assembly plant, Slate uses molded polypropylene body panels. And to eliminate the cost of a paint shop, the panels are not painted. Instead, customers will be offered different wraps that they can apply to the body panels. There are two different battery packs available. A 52.7 kilowatt hour pack that delivers 150 miles of driving range and an 84.3 kilowatt hour pack that delivers 240 miles. The truck is powered by a 150 kilowatt motor, that's about 201 horsepower, and it's got 260 newton meters or 215 pound-feet of torque. It will accelerate from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 8 seconds, and top speed is 92 miles an hour. It will carry a 1,400 pound payload, which is 635 kilos, and it can tow a 1,000 pound trailer, or 453 kilos. The overall length is 175.5 inches, which is about 2 feet shorter than a Ford Maverick. But the pickup has a 5-foot bed, which is half a foot longer than the Mavericks, and it's wider than the Maverick, too. The interior packaging was actually inspired by the Chevrolet Bolt EV, both roomy and safe. The truck is expected to get a 5-star and top safety pick rating. Inside, it's bare minimum. For example, while there is a small instrument cluster, there is no center screen. Instead, the dashboard has sliding mounting points for smartphones and tablets to serve as the center screen. Interestingly, Slate says customers will be able to get over-the-air updates for the powertrain controller via their smartphone. There are lots of power connections around the interior for speakers and other plug-in devices, but there are no power windows. You crank them up and down by hand, just like in the old days. There are three rotary knobs on the lower instrument panel for HVAC, vent settings, and fan speed. Speaking of HVAC, despite the bare minimum approach, air conditioning is standard equipment. But that's it. Nothing else to clutter the dash. Slate is actually the brainchild of two billionaires, Mark Walter, the CEO of Guggenheim Partners, and Thomas Tull, who, amongst other things, started a company called Rebuild Manufacturing. They were motivated to do this project to achieve two goals, revive manufacturing in America and make an electric truck that the average household can afford. Jeff Bezos is also an investor. The CEO of Slate is Chris Barman, who has extensive automotive experience, including her time at Chrysler as a vice president and who also ran multiple vehicle programs. Eric Kuyper is the head of engineering. He has extensive experience in vehicle integration with both traditional OEMs and EV startups. Tisha Johnson is the head of design. Amongst other things, she spent a decade at Volvo in Sweden as vice president of interior design. The chief commercial officer is Jeremy Snyder, who spent a decade at Tesla as the head of global business development. So these are people who really know what they're doing. Their target customers are hourly wage earners, not early adopters. In fact, 
all of the company's advertising and marketing will be aimed at working class people, not tech geeks or EV advocates. The idea is to give those wage earners a brand new vehicle with the latest safety equipment and a full warranty rather than force them into the used car market. The company is even creating what it calls Slate University to teach owners DIY repair and maintenance to make it even more affordable to own. To keep the price low, Slate is only going to build a basic truck with nothing on it and then offer all kinds of accessories to trim it out. It will offer wraps with different colors and patterns that customers can apply or hire someone to do it. There's also stickers that can get applied to the wheels to customize them. Even the key fob can be customized. For example, the fob can be fitted with a built-in screwdriver that fits all the screw sizes needed to install the accessories. And Slate will offer plans for customers to 3D print parts to customize their truck. Part of the thinking behind this is that the second or third owners of the truck can put on their own wraps and accessories to give it their own personal look at very low cost. One of the best aspects of the story is how Slate developed the truck. The companies run very frugally to keep overhead at a minimum. For example, when they saw that a company down the street from them was getting rid of a bunch of office chairs, they ran out and corralled them all to use in Slate's offices. And rather than build a beautiful corporate headquarters, they moved into an empty building that an automotive supplier had abandoned. Their assembly plant in Warsaw, Indiana is actually a giant 1.5 million square foot warehouse that was sitting empty. And it's tooled to make 140,000 trucks a year, whereas most truck plants are tooled to make 100,000 more than that. To simplify the truck, they DFMA'd it. That is, they designed it for manufacturing and assembly. For example, their first iteration of the instrument panel used 27 parts. They got that down to only seven parts. The door panel started out using 15 parts. They got that down to 10. In fact, the entire truck is made from 500 different items to be shipped into its assembly plant compared to the 2,500 parts shipped into traditional truck plants. Slate did three separate virtual builds of the truck before it made its first prototype. Most automakers only do one. And at its pilot plant near Detroit, which it used to build 72 prototypes of the truck, each vehicle was built in exactly the same sequence that will be used in mass production. The idea was to catch any problems very early in the program. Slate will go into production in the fourth quarter of 2026, and it's going to sell its truck and SUV directly to customers, not through franchise dealers. It's in talk with several companies to handle distribution and service. Here's my take. The company's goals are admirable. The way it developed the truck is worthy of a business case study. The truck itself will appeal to a lot of people, and this company is going to get a lot of attention. But there are two things that worry me. If the $7,500 EV rebate goes away, then the base truck will cost more than a base Ford Maverick. Also, tooling the plant to make 140,000 trucks a year, that's pretty ambitious, after all. Ford only sold 130,000 Mavericks last year, and that Maverick is a pretty popular truck. Even so, in my book, Slate is doing everything right. I'm stunned that they were able to keep everything secret for so long, and I truly want to see this company succeed. Do you want to see the automotive industry grow and thrive? So do we. That's why we dedicate our shows to providing the people in the industry with important data and information, and access to the people who are driving the industry forward with the guests that we bring on our shows and the interviews that we conduct. But we need your help to continue doing it. That's why I'm asking you to support AutoLine with a YouTube or Patreon membership. It'll get you extra content that will be available only to members, but it will especially make sure that you and AutoLine continue to drive the automotive industry forward.